Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so my name is Jeans. Um, I'm from ACLO. So we are a big data company specialized in social media analytics, big data analysis, and also uh, BI, business intelligence dashboard design. So this is a report that we created in May. We released this in 8th of May, and uh, it's talking about you know, the life after COVID, what, what SME, what retail should do you know, post-COVID situations, how they can digitalize the business. So here we talk about eight different industries, um, more than 30 segments. So under these eight industries, we have more than 30 segments such as this. Um, let me turn on my laser point. Um, okay, so you have fashion, F&B, beauty and wellness, department store, uh, uh, leisure and entertainment sundry and services, IT, and hotel. So under these eight industries, we have crawled all your social media profiles and the posting from 1st of January until um, 14th of April. So we talk about before MCO and during MCO in Malaysia retail industries, how these brands cope with this MCO while they are unable to operate as usual, how they digitalize their businesses, how they able to create a very interesting content to engage with their audiences while people staying at home. So here I'm, I may not be able to talk about all these eight industries, each of the pages, because this report uh, we give away for free. Later I will put a link at the end of my speech. You, can, you guys can go and download the free report. There's more than 100, exactly 101 pages. Now. So 101 pages, it may take a lot of time to digest the information, but here I will talk about a few key learnings that I think is very useful and very meaningful for, for you guys. So I will talk about fashions, F&B, beauty and wellness, department store, and leisure and entertainment. Then I will conclude with my own three key learnings, three factors that I think we all should adopt into our content marketing and digital marketing strategy, right? So um, from these 8,000 profiles, I think F&B and fashions are the most, uh, are the most popular one, you know, among other digitalizations, business sectors, fashion and FMB is always, um, they are always on the latest trends. They are always on the social medias. They've been using it to do their O2O -O marketing. So here we can see it increased even more, you know, during MCO from 18th of March until 14th of April, we can see total increase 14% during MCO that they enable their e-commerce or their digital businesses. So here we have analyzed more than 1,000 brands of this uh, fa in fashion industry. And we, we, we noticed that the top three postings are all coming from our local, local brand, local fashion brand, which is Fashion Valley. Okay, this is a homegrown fashion brand. They launched a Dudo Ruma sale during the MCO and supported the sales with a series of giveaway, contests, promotions. Um, people say that, oh, you know, staying at home, we don't need to buy so much clothes. But then brands who already adopt this digital earlier before this COVID, they have, uh, using, they have been able to utilize these social media trends and uh, it, it is kind of advantage for them because they already digitalized their, their business earlier. So to them, it's, it's, it's not a big impact. But to those retail that haven't enabled their e-commerce, it's pretty tough. But we also see that other brands like view fashions that they're able to ask people to, uh, to engage with their audience while creating those content that is more relevant um, to MCO. So is, is Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, YouTube, all these social media is more like a PR channels for these brands who are heavily invested in retail, but they not yet enable their e-commerce. They use this as a way to engage with their audience to remind them that, hey, my brand is still here. And after MCO, you can always come back and shop. So we, we see some of the uh, biggest brands in Malaysia, like J, JD Sport, all these, you will see a long queue in malls after they reopen their retails. And we also see that the Instagram and Facebook, often they have a different kind of content strategy. And this is very right. And some people, they just mirror the post, but actually on Facebook, Instagram, they have a very different audiences. So you should create a different content. Uh, for, for different audience on different platforms. So overall brands like fashion brands, they, uh, they will explore 
innovative content such as online films, um, music videos, uh, those that can keep them staying on the trend. So our key learnings here in the fashion industry is to stay on trends. And e-commerce platform, um, I, I think they, averagely, they are still okay. They are still surviving during MCO. They are doing not bad. But those who are heavily relying on retail outlets, that is more crucial. But this also pushed the fashion industry to, towards uh, O2O and also fully e-commerce. Okay, so next we move to F&B industry. Um, F&B is definitely uh, a, a tough industry to survive during MCO. But then we're able to see a 20% jump during the MCO. And a few, few days ago, we also saw that uh, Grab released a statement that during the MCO, more than 70,000 restaurants and cafes uh, created on Grab. So this, uh, this also justifies that this data that you know, more than 1,000 over brands, we noticed that hey, uh, it's, it has been doubled from 21% jump to 46% during MCO that they enable their digitalizations. So what does it mean, digitalizations for F&B industry? It means that they may set up their websites. Um, they offer their own food delivery using their own logistic uh, options, or they may enable on Food Panda, um, Store Hub um, and grab, grab food as well. So uh, this pushed the restaurants to quickly adopt the digitalizations. And we see the contents from them is uh, quite interesting. And they, they created inspirations of their meals, um, trying to push their food delivery. So for key learnings for FMB, we have to evolve, innovate and adapt, especially on the content trends. Right. I, I, I myself, I've spoken to a few restaurants and cafe owners that they, they, they seem to be able to survive through MCO. But what's come next? Because we foresee the traffic and the crowds will be lesser as compared to before COVID, before MCO. So the, the one of the strategy here to give away is we have to leverage on the social media technology, especially social media listening, data analytics, to quickly understand the consumer behavior on social media space and how to keep engaging your consumer by using the right strategy and the right trends, such as TikTok, such as Instagrams, and quickly create a new type of food, seasonal food options to, to leverage on that. So from food delivery to DIY cooking kits, uh, uh, FMB brands has been using these as, a, as, a, as their gimmicks to engage with their consumer, such as the uh, uh, Japanese baked cheesecake, uh, such as the Dalgona coffee and bread as well. So all this has been um, a trend created during the MCO and some of the cafes are able to recreate this product within their menus uh, and sell to their customers. It may not be very profiting, but it's a good way to remind your consumer that the brand is still there and you are doing something to keep engaging the users. Okay, so next we come to the beauty and wellness. Wow, this, this industry is definitely one of the top performing on e-commerce sales uh, during MCO. So we saw 11% increase. It's not that many as we expected. Um, but some of the beauty products, especially the products, the physical goods, they're able to triple or, or increase four, three to four times of the e-commerce sales during MCO. Some brands are even doing better than last year, 11-11. So this, uh, this is the average sales uh, uh, statistic that we got them from, from the data that product goods are doing quite well on e-commerce, but for the services, especially like spa, salons, that, that is really tough for them because they, their, their business model is to serve their customer is to providing haircuts, hair treatments, and etc. So they are unable to do anything at all during this MCO period. But they're able to continue to bring up their brand by engaging with the user by creating those contents like how to, how to have a haircut yourself, DIY at home, you know, how to do your coloring, hair coloring at home, you know, things like that are one of the biggest trends going on during MCO. So compare Facebook and Instagram, Facebook also use more MCO related content to engage with the audience. While Instagram still very much promoting their products for this uh, beauty and wellness industry. So the reason why we think that 
because Facebook, you have more users as compared to Instagram. You have 18 to 65 years old. You have men and women, like different kind of personality, different kind of user behaviors. It's all on Facebook. But on Instagram, people are more care about the appearance. People are more fashionable, more trendy. So products, products are still the best way uh, to integrate with their brands uh, on Instagram. While on Facebook, it's very different. It, they, they prefer things are more casual, candid, lifestyle. Things are more useful to their life. So during MCO, we, we noticed that across different industry, uh, contents that work the best is still more about people's lifestyle at home. So what you can use in your daily life. What are the, what are the toolkits? What are the tips that I can use to protect my hair? I can protect my skin. You know, uh, how to cook a simple meals at home. Things like that are provided by industry like fashion, skincare, and even hotel. Right. So we see that the top polls performing uh, on Facebook platforms from uh, beauty brands such as Innisfree, they reach the highest Facebook interactions by creating an online contest featuring a makeup artist doing a very creative postings inspiring your know, makeup looks to encourage the audience to submit their makeup from home. And we also see that the number two coming from another brand, Amelia, is uh, they doing a live cooking demo. So, um, so Amelia is, is like a wellness uh, brand. So here we talk about beauty and wellness that it combining spa, salons, and beauty products. So on Instagram, um, we see a very different content as compared to Facebook. On Instagram, we see that they often link it up <clears throat> from Instagram to TikTok, TikTok back to Instagram, trying to engage a more younger audiences. So here you can see the Sephora is engaging the K-pop, um, um, K-pop Jenny Kim, uh, a K-pop group called Blackpink. And then you can see that the, this Brina Beauty Makeups is uh, using TikTok as, as, as a point. Uh, to engage with even younger audiences. So the key learnings for this uh, beauty and wellness is um, stay well, stay home. And in-store services and treatments is unable to operate, but brands are coming up with more ways to engage with their consumer online, especially on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So for e-commerce strategy, is is not easy, but then it, it, it pushed them to adapt the digitalizations whether to provide the e-vouchers, selling on e-commerce, uh, all those strategy need to pair with a relevant content to ensure that your brand and consumer is still remain strong. So next, we go to department store and supermarkets. Um, this is um, incredible because of this MCO, uh, the, only, the only retail business that is still allowed to open is supermarkets, grocery store, convenience store, and they've been doing well. And also because of this MCO, they, they digitalized their business, they set up their e-commerce and also uh, grocery delivery. And this helped them to adopt the O2O strategy quickly as compared to other industry. So a 14% added during the MCO from these uh, supermarkets and grocery store. So out of these 200 stores that we, we, we noticed that a few uh, a few key brands like Watson's, Aeon's, that they increased more than uh, four to 600 times of their web traffics during the MCO. Also because they have been doing digital way earlier before this COVID happened, right? So, but in, in these key learnings, we, we noticed that um, these main, main, main players from, uh, especially like supermarkets, department store, they're supplying these daily necessities to, the, to their customers their role of O2O is very important. So I, I, I believe they are one of the very few industry, retail industry that got benefits from this MCO. Yeah. And then we talk about leisure and entertainment. Um, pretty sad to say, um, we noticed that the digitalization of business uh, only 14%. And that is because they are selling physical goods but services, entertainment services such as cinemas are unable to do any digitalizations besides just providing um, cool contents to engage with their users, trying to sell their popcorns or nuggets 
during the MCO, but that is not able to keep up with the expenses because their retail expenses is very heavy. And the only way um, to create the revenue in streams during the MCO is by selling their, their, their food and beverages. But still, I think brands like this, they still look far ahead. They still think it very positive that after COVID, things will recover, things will come back soon. And they still doing their very best to keep up with the trends, to keep engaging the audience with the contents. So here are the things that we want to share is, we hope this report, this 101 pages reports, uh, are able to inspire you with those content strategy from the best performing uh, brands from different industry. So some of my friends told me that, hey, I, I'm doing cafe business and I, I, I got inspirations idea how to create a better content strategy from fashion industry. So a FMB brand is learning from fashion industry. A fashion industry is learning all to all from the store industry. So things like that happen is because social media is, is, is kind of um, uh, ecosystems and it has the, the, the largest content um, platforms in the world. So you can, through this report, you're able to learn different kind of content, different kind of uh, digital strategy, is able to bring up your brand um, to, to stay on trends. But not every, not every industry is able uh, to digitalize. Uh, this is also one of our learning that I will talk about. I'll talk more about it later. So the key learnings for this lesson entertainment is when one door closes, another opens. So like movie delays is terrible for cinemas and those pet shops, they are unable to open. So one of their, their, their profiting business model is for pet grooming. So things like that are unable to operate. But then they are able to see um, because of consumer behavior change, they may need to shift their business model and the business strategy after this COVID. And things like um, create a different kind of products, different kind of services that can cater for lesser crowds and can cater for people who are staying at home. Right. So our report 101 pages, right? We, we, we include more than this. We include, even we talk about the digitalization um, statistic, like what are the sales channel they use during MCO? Is it Lazada? Is it set up their own store? But um, to be honest, we also surprised when we see the result that we noticed that WhatsApp is still the king. So what do you mean WhatsApp is still the king? Um, during MCO, most of the SME brands from all different retail industry, they chose WhatsApp to digitalize their business. They use WhatsApp to connect to their customer. They use WhatsApp to sell and service their customers. And we think one of the reasons is lack of digital knowledge and don't know where to connect to those platforms like Lazada, Shopee, or they do not have enough human resource um, to create their own websites. So even we, we, we know that uh, one of the, the, the most valuable e-commerce platform, the most affordable and the best way is by using Easy Store that are part of the Exabyte business. So Easy Store, we also encourage more users to set up their own website, like using platform like Easy Store. And we, we, we are quite sad to see that WhatsApp is still the king because that when you compare to other regions, other markets, right? Their e-commerce has been growing super fast. Well, back in Malaysia, because of MCO, everyone have to do digital, everyone have to do e-commerce. But then they chose WhatsApp because that is zero cost and that is the easiest way. But that is a lot of manual works that need to be done. So this is our first uh, key learnings here. And we think this is not a very good news. And we still hope that uh, a, a more mature e-commerce infrastructure will be able to support more SME and help them to, to adopt e-commerce model. And for the second key learnings, not all industry can digitalize, like just, just I just mentioned just now. Uh, industry like hotel is unable to digitalize. They can only keep creating um, contents, uh, a very um, lifestyle contents and, and, and marketing strategy to keep engaging with the users while users are staying at home. But because 99% of their revenue come from 
uh, services in the hotel, such as staying overnight, using their spa services, and etc. So all these are unable to digitalize. But we, we, we see that uh, most of the four to five star hotel brands is still able to um, leverage social media to engage with their fans. Uh, I, I think this is, this is good. Um, but provided you, you must have a strong cash flow to survive through this period of time, then you can do a long-term marketing strategy on digital. So other industries such as, um, such as this uh, uh, hair salon and spa also unable to digitalize. So for the last key learnings, the third one, build your own content hub. I, I think this is uh, one of the very important message that I hope to deliver um, in this sharing. That is, uh, uh, most of the SMB brands, when they started their digital journey, they always think that um, we don't need a website. You know, We can do e-commerce by using WhatsApp. We can just set up a Facebook or Instagram account and start selling our product and services. I mean, that's right, that is, uh, that is the beginning stage. But eventually, all those platform and data is not belongs to you. Those data belongs to giants company like Facebook, Instagram, Google, TikTok, and etc. And most of the time, you're unable to extract those useful and valuable data out to your, to your own systems because those are belong to this giant company and they are using this data, capitalize it on it and make profits by selling advertising um, to advertisers. So building your own content hub has been lacking in Malaysia markets and most of the time is lack of the digital knowledge. How, what, how important is building your own content? So here I want to talk about a very simple model strategy that any brands, any SMEs, any industry they can use. So most of the time, um, you will create a brand content first. You will create your own um, mechanisms, your own promotions. Then you will put it, you will publish in your platforms. But here we want to suggest to you that you publish it to your content hub, whether it's a website, whether it's a e-commerce or it's a mobile apps. And then you do a content marketing, share to the social platforms like Facebook, Instagrams, and, and YouTube, etc. And always remember to do the tracking link so you're able to see uh, how other platform is performing by bringing you the users. Then only you bring them to your sales, to your retail or whatever. And last step, the most important is to collect all the database and to do further analyze and optimize on your content hubs. So content hub, it can be something like using Easy Store as an e-commerce website. So those platforms like Facebook, Instagram, it can only be your temporary uh, uh, online store. And it's unable to give you a full utilization, especially on data parts. You're unable to get all the data, like the customer data and etc. But e-commerce, setting up your own content hub, your own e-commerce, this thing is 100% belongs to you. You own the copyrights, you own, you own the source code, you own all the customer database, such as the name, email, and phone. All this, you are able to do a more um, um, integrated marketing and a cycles that you can keep looping and looping and all this will help to strengthen your brands, especially on digital space. So we noticed that, you know, most of the SMB, especially these 8,000 brands, uh, majority is still using WhatsApp. So here is a message, the final message that we want to send in this speech is, we, we hope uh, brands more focus on your own content hubs. And social platforms, it can only be become your PR channels, your marketing channels, but not your selling store. Okay, and uh, here is the link. If you are interested to see more uh, of the reports, this is a free report you can download from this link, uh, Bitly eConfess. It's 101 pages uh, talking about eight main industries. We do have a full report talking about 31 segments uh, that is contain more than uh, 150 to 200 pages that we we also selling on our web but i think most of the smes a free report is more than enough for you probably will take you a week or two to to digest all these informations yeah all yep right, i'm done so laurie thank you i'm back <laughs> thanks <laughs> jins okay so we have some questions and uh guys keep them coming we want to answer as many questions as we can because we do have time the first one is from uh hua kao i think i pronounced your name right 
Hopefully I didn't butcher it. I'm so sorry if I did. Okay, his question is, hi, I think I missed his comment about uh, the 100 plus pages report. May I know how I can get um, that? And is it a paid report and how much does it cost? Um, so, sorry, where can I see? Oh, Q&A, okay. Yeah, the Q&A right um, beneath your screen. My dish. I think I missed his comments about 101 pages. Ah, okay. So to answer that question, you, you, if you're looking at my screen right now, you can see this link. This link is the download link for the free report, 101 pages. So you just need to type in this URL, you'll be able to download the PDF directly. And we're also selling the full report at uh, 300 ringgit. That is, uh, is very detailed and comprehensive, talking about each segment under each industry. Yeah. Okay, our next one is from DT. Now, this person would like to know, how can we do WhatsApp marketing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't, I, I, I don't really encourage that, but then, mm. Well, WhatsApp marketing is more like <clears throat> um, <clears throat> keeping up with your consumer on one-on-one -on -one basis that can create a more rapid rapport with your, with your audience. Um, if for, for servicing line like hair salon, spa, uh, massage spa, all, all, all these uh, servicing line, they can use WhatsApp to keep in touch with their customers, especially the existing customer. <clears throat> this can help them to, to build the trust and the relationship with your brands. But if you ask about how, how to blast the WhatsApp ads to all these audiences, I, <clears throat> I don't think that's very appropriate because of the, the data policy happening in Malaysia. Yeah, but I hope I answer your questions. And I do think there's a lot to uh, of truth in what you said. Okay, so let's move forward. This one is from Helen. Uh, Helen says, very informative presentation, thank you. Um, Thank you. Can you please give advice uh, in terms of the options we have in order to enhance customer experience when the business is going digital? Which option is a popular tool? Um, digital is very wide. I, I would say it's a very, very wide um, industry, very wide world. And I, like, like I say, the last thing that I shared is the most important thing is to focus in your own content hub. So people think that Facebook Facebook is a big ocean. Yes, it's a big ocean, but you, you do not want to target every single person on Facebook. And sometimes when using ad boosting, you're unable to target exactly the right audience you want because those are the users that is very active on Facebook. So it's like you go, you go fishing, you go to oceans. There's so many, there, ha there, there is sharks, there is uh, fishes, there is a uh, whale, but you only want the shark. So the only way is to build your own pool, your fish pool. Like you build your own fish pond at your home, bringing in the fish from the oceans. So that is like building your own e-commerce website. It's like building your own fish pool. This pool is belongs to you. You can do whatever you like to them. You can change the design anytime. You can, you can create different kinds of database and, and to retain the customers. You can remarket, you can retarget anytime. So the best tool I'd say, I think always start from, um, like you can use tools like X Easy Store from, from XR Bikes. First is easy to use. Second is, um, is very affordable. Some, some of the brands, they, they want to create their own e-commerce, they want to tailor it, and that can cost them a boom. And not to mention lack of human resource to maintain the heavy systems. So I, I'm not here to advertise for XR Bikes, but I, I do think markets need more tools like Easy Store to help SMEs who have a very limited budget um, to grow into digital space. Right. Now, just going back to what you said about Facebook there, perhaps maybe some of our users, if they were to say, because I know Facebook does have this function to sort of tailor ads to certain demographics in terms of age and where you stay, what would you say to people who would say, um, who would counter what you just said in terms of yep. advertising on Facebook? Yeah. So advertising on Facebook or platforms like Google or, or even YouTube, is to help you to target to the right audience, to the audience that you want to target. But what happened after you target the right audience? They will go back to the Facebook and you didn't able to retain them if you do not have a very solid content hub. So a content hub like your own websites or your own e-commerce store. So if you're able to target the right audience, you may want to convert them to your own e-commerce, your own store and retain them so that you can retarget them with a better strategy, with a more affordable 
um, marketing marketing methods such as EDM, email blasts, such as WhatsApp marketing, after sales service, etc. So I, I'm talking. I'm not saying that Facebook is not helping you to target the right audience, but what are the actions that you take after you target the right audience? So if you do not have an e-commerce store, you're using Facebook or you're using WhatsApp to sell your product and services. So you use Facebook, you target the right audience. Then you don't have a, a, a place for them to go to, especially your, your, your own hub. So this, this is the thing that I want to emphasize. Mm. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right. This next one is from Gabriel. Now, um, Gabriel is asking, do you have reports or education industry um, in terms of education <laughs> recruitment agents? And okay, so he actually rephrased it. Do you have reports or knowledge on education industry, especially for education recruitment agents? And how do they use e commerce besides putting information to websites and also WhatsApp to contact students and parents? Uh, education agents are selling services instead of like physical products. Mm. Uh, let me share a bit about how our platform works. Because we are a big data company, we do have these uh, a cloud software as a service platforms that uh, can empower users to crawl and analyze all the social media profiles. So such as you want to know the trend of coffee, you can, you can, you can, you can analyze certain hashtags happening on Instagrams on, and Twitters. So you can, you can grab some insights, what is happening in Malaysia in coffee industry. But it only limited to a few social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. <coughs> Sorry. So, so back to the questions, can we crawl education industry? Yes, provided if they have active on social media platforms, then we can, we can crawl about how they do their contents, how they approach their audience, and how they sell their products on social media platforms. So we can crawl any kind of um, brands or industry. It doesn't limit, but it doesn't limit it by industry or brands, it's limited by platforms. So you, you, you can visit to my website, aclo.com to see how the platform works. And if you, if you need more uh, help, you can, you can come to me. I will be glad to answer your questions. And we have a team of professionals that is able to support you um, how, how to build your brands by using e-commerce tools and things like that. Mm. All right, super cool, Gabriel. I hope that answers your question. Um, Helen has another question. Um, she agrees that uh, the Facebook algorithm will force us to engage with the customer more costly nowadays. And should we invest further? I think you've partly answered this, but uh, feel free to elaborate. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I, I think it will keep increasing the cost because of this uh, COVID. So I think not just Malaysia, but globally, <clears throat> every company will have to digitalize their business. And this will definitely increase the cost of the PPC, uh, the Facebook ads, and etc. So should you invest further? The answer is yes. <clears throat> you have to keep this ball rolling, keep this momentum going. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I... It's okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Would you like to take a moment to get a sip of water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a minute. I'll, I'll join you so you don't feel alone. I've got my, my bottle right here. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Okay. So you, you, you still, you, you, you should keep investing in this, in this game, uh, because if not, you will lose all the visibility for your brands. Not all brands are able to keep viral and viral every day, but you should focus on certain metrics that can help you to profit and capitalize on these Facebook ads or other ads. So our AS is one of it, return on advertising spend, uh, how much you spend and how much revenue come in in return from the ads. So all these metrics is usable and very useful for, for e-commerce businesses. If, if not, you will just keep blindly throwing in money to invest on ads, but you don't see the profits. So you must learn a few conversion metrics that is able to capitalize on these Facebook ads. Uh, don't care about the cost, but focus on the revenue coming back. What are the, what are the break even points from your investments. What is the RI that you want to focus? Not the likes, not the views, but the traffics, but the data that is going to your own content hub. That is the things that you should focus. So things will keep increasing. So I, I believe even your own product and services, you will keep increasing the cost as well. You know? So I think it's very normal for Facebook to increase the cost. Mm. 
Okay, um, we still have time for two more questions. Uh, but guys, if you have any more questions for Jin, just go right ahead, type them and leave them in the Q&A box and he'll get back to you even after his session. He'll do that offline. Our next one is from Joanne. Now, Joanne is asking, can you elaborate more on Content Hub? Hmm. So let me repeat again. Maybe I talked too fast just now. Um, Content Hub is like building your own building your own house, okay? Right now, selling on Facebook or selling on WhatsApp is just like uh, sleeping in other people's house <laughs> and you didn't pay the rent. So anytime <laughs> this uh, landlord can kick you out, you know, if they don't like or mistake you for anything that is violating their policy, they'll just close your page and you, don't, you, you will lose all the efforts that you have invested earlier. So Content Hub is the place that is belongs to you. The land is belongs to you, the house is belongs to you, the interior design is up to you to, to change. It's, it's very heavy investment, you know, to some people because you need, you need people, you need talents to maintain it, you need to keep it active. But this is the place that you can retain your customers and you can resell, upsell to your, to your customers. So Content Hub in digital space is like your e-commerce store. So to grab their content hub is the mobile apps, the iOS, the Android apps. But to SMEs who selling products, e-commerce store, using easy store can become their own content hub because this is the place that they can customize. And it's, it's entirely belongs to them, the domains, the database. So the important part of the content hub is to own everything that, especially the technology platforms, it belongs to you. And the most important is you are able to get all kinds of data about the customers. On Facebook, they do not give you all data. And some people may say, hey, I can use lead generations ads, then I can get their database. Yes, you need to pay even more. And this may not be good for long term. Yeah. And I think just to add on to what you said as well, because it makes a lot of sense when you own something wholly and completely, I think it does give you like uh, a better sense of being able to how you want to change things in the future. And it gives you also a sense of direction. And I, I really, really do agree with that. So thank you so much for that input. Thank you. Okay, we will take uh, two more questions. I think we have time for two more. We're just trying to squeeze in as much as possible right now. The next one comes from Chia Yi. Now, Chai is asking, hi, we are having difficulty to draw customers to our website, even though we have tried to increase our exposure in social media. Uh, I'm not sure what the missing link is. Perhaps you want to add on to this? Mm. <clears throat> I, I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of SMEs, when they started the digital journey, um, this is the, the top one challenge, the top one question. Like, we, we have this content hub, we have this website, we've we done a lot on Facebook ads. But then there's no sales, there's no traffic to our websites. So what is the missing link? I, I, I think the missing link is especially on the content parts and the performance part. <clears throat> so if you have a very good content, but you lack of a good performance marketing, uh, it's like having a very beautiful wife at home, but you don't allow the wife to go out. So nobody can see how pretty is your wife or how handsome is your husband. And Having a good performance marketing without a good content strategy is like, um, it's like you keep going out, but then you, you don't, you, you know, you don't make up, you don't, you don't, you don't brush up yourself, you don't build the confidence, but you keep going out to social with the people, but people just don't like you. So I, I think the good strategy, especially for e-commerce, is to, to have a balance of performance marketing and content marketing. So a good content integrating with a good performance marketing can give you a better ROI. And we always believe in that. So you must have a balancing between the performance and contents and always do things based on data, not based on your sense. So we saw a lot of really creative people. Um, they, they have very uh, rich experience background in advertising industry, uh, 20 years, 30 years. And they always think, sometimes they will, they will think objectively, they say, Red color is the best because Ferrari used red color, you know, things like that. But when they do it on social media, it fails. But if you have a data analytics to support what you think, that sometimes is different based on the big data, blue color is better than red, yellow is the best, you know, reason can be blah, 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 blah. So based on data to make the decisions, especially for your contents and use the right contents 
and, and set the right targeting. So performance marketing is another big, um, big knowledge base. And it's talking about advertising strategy. How do you target the people? How do you link, um, link the traffic to your websites and retarget them using email? So all these are under performance marketing. I, I believe uh, Google is very helpful. You, you just search what is performance marketing, what is content marketing. Definitely, you, you, you get a few tips from that. Yeah. Yes. Um, right off the bat, I'm just going to compliment you, Jin, because you are hilarious when it comes to giving examples. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for answering that one. Oh, we'll take one more. And this one is from Fun Lee. Now, Fun Lee would like to know, is the tracking link referring to Facebook pixel type of tracking source code? Yep, tracking links can be GA, can be your Google Tag Manager, can be your fix Facebook pixels, or if you are using other SEO tools, uh, any, any form of it, as long as you can track the, the traffic is coming from referral platforms, okay? So let's put your Content Hub as your main strategy, your main place, right? Any other traffic is considered as referral. It can be, re it can be referrals from blogs, forums, uh, social media platforms. And uh, most important, you're able to track every single traffic, where they come from, who are they, uh, how, what they like and what they don't like about your things. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Jin, that's all the time we have for today. We actually have uh, one or two more questions which have been unanswered. So, if you could go ahead and uh, answer that once your session ends, that would be great. But thank you so much for being so relevant and relatable and so funny. <laughs> there were so many times when you gave uh, examples. I'm not <laughs> not, I'm not purposely doing that, but I think uh, we, 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 we talk to a lot of people, especially SMEs, they, sometimes they think digital is very deep, very complicated yeah. with those uh, uh, you know, jargons and terms and metrics. You know? Like Facebook itself, they have more than 200 metrics. Google, they have more than 300 metrics. So we, we have to make it simple for SME to understand by using those uh, I don't know, lifestyle jobs or some you know, simple terms that they can understand how it works. And yeah. I think when you also add in humor, it makes the learning process a lot lighter and a lot easier. And it's so, it was so fun to just listen to you for this last 45 minutes. And to everyone who's watching this, give him a virtual round of applause. Thank you so much for your job. Well done. Jin, okay. do stay on. We have one more sharing session and it's from Xbytes itself. But on the whole, just thank you for joining us at eCommerce Fest 2020. Thanks. All right. Um, you're welcome to stay and have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Exobytes. Grow your business online.